Welcome back chemists. This video is all about polar and nonpolar molecules. By this end of the video, you should be able to identify the term for polarity, explain why certain atoms have more pull or attraction for the electrons, identify molecules as either polar or nonpolar based off of its symmetry, and identify which geometries will generally be polar molecules. Polarity is much like a tug of war because what we see in polar bonds is that they're basically bonds where the electrons are shared unequally. So you have two different atoms that have different attractions for electrons. The atom that is more electronegative will pull or attract the electrons closer to itself. So when you have different atoms, each has a different pull or different attraction. And so therefore, what you're going to see is a different um, kind of partial charges that form on the molecule. So with something like HF or hydrofluoric acid, you're going to see the Lewis structure look something like this. And you know that fluorine has a greater electronegativity than hydrogen. So therefore, that is going to kind of pull on those electrons in between the hydrogen and the fluorine, and we're going to see the electrons be closer to the fluorine. Now, if you remember, electrons are negatively charged, so what that means is you're going to see the fluorine then have a partial negative, and this little sign is called delta. It has a partial negative, and then the partial positive would be on the hydrogen. This is considered a polar molecule, and when you think of polar, right, it has two poles. Think of like a magnet that has a north and a south pole. Nonpolar bonds is where electrons are shared equally between two atoms. So for example, atoms that are the same have the same pull or the same attraction on the shared electrons because they have the same electronegativity value. So for example, something like H2 would be considered nonpolar because each hydrogen has the same attraction for electrons. In something like carbon tetrachloride or CCL4, each chlorine has the same attraction for electrons, so that would also be considered nonpolar. Another way to look at it is looking at the atoms that surround the central atom. If all atoms surrounding the central atom are the same, then the electrons are shared equally, and that's what makes a nonpolar molecule. So the question becomes, well, how do you know if a molecule is polar or nonpolar? Here's a really easy set of rules. It works for most things, but not all things, but it'll work for the things that we cover in this class. So the general rules are if you have different atoms around a central atom, it will be a polar molecule. If you have the same atoms around a central atom, they are always nonpolar molecules. So for example, if we were to look at H2 versus HF, we said that this is going to be a nonpolar molecule and this is going to be a polar molecule. And we said that because, again, we have different atoms that are connected to each other. Each has a different attraction for electrons, so therefore this one has to be polar and this one has to be nonpolar. Here's another example. We've got CO2 versus COS. So again, this is going to be considered a nonpolar molecule but this is going to be considered a polar molecule. And the reason why, again, is because we've got carbon in the middle, but we've got an oxygen on one side and a sulfur on the other. Each has a different attraction for electrons, so you're going to see this molecule be polar as a result. Here's some more examples, right? We've got H2O, this is NH3 or ammonia. So with H2O, if you look at that central atom, you can see you have an unshared pair, an unshared pair, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. Unshared pairs are not the same as hydrogen. Therefore, that is going to be considered a polar molecule. And then also for ammonia, you've got an unshared pair, and then again, hydrogens. If you have different things connected to the central atom, that is going to be a polar molecule. And that's why both of these are considered polar. One helpful tip is every time you have an unshared pair on the central atom, picture that unshared pair of electrons as a different atom, and that'll make it a little bit more easy to see. Let's look at methane, and then this is methylene chloride. So that's methane, this is methylene chloride. Again, think about which one would you expect to be polar. Look at that central atom and then decide. If you guess the one on the right is polar, you would be right. So the one on the right is polar because you have chlorine, which is connected to a carbon, and then the rest are hydrogen. 
They're not all the same. They're not all hydrogen, therefore that has to be polar. Versus this one, these are all hydrogen, and so therefore that has to be nonpolar. Here's another one. This is formaldehyde. Formaldehyde looks something like this. Again, we've got carbon, and then we've got an oxygen connected to it, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. This is also going to be polar. And in this class, there are some um, exceptions, but in this class, we will treat planar as always being polar. So that is it for our discussion of polarity. Hopefully, you are able now to identify whether a molecule will be polar or nonpolar. As always, it takes practice to do a really great job with understanding chemistry, so keep practicing. Thank you so much for watching.